Okay, we're going to create an American flag uh, hat. It's a baby newborn. And what you'll need is the directions, and I have them available on mikeysmail.com. And this is called the Creative Design Worksheet, and I have these available in my website if you want to print out one of these. And basically what I do is I just list the numbers from 1 to 10, and then 1 to 13. So then I keep it all in sections. So um, these are all my hats that I've been designing. So I want to check them off as they go. So that's your first step. Get yourself prepared. What we want to do is I've got uh, red, white, obviously from my American flag, I've got red, white, and blue. And uh, these I, are just emptied out dollar store pens. I call them styler pens. And uh, it's just my fancy name for it. So in order to feed one of these styler pens, you just empty out the in interior. And then you just kind of stick the loop into the end of the of the styler pen and using something small like this wooden crochet hook available at hookandmama.com um, you can just push down the material through. Actually it's not hookandmama.com but on my website it's hookandmama if you want to check her out. So you just want to create a slip knot so back over the forward back again pushing up and now we're ready to start. So we're going to do the casting on process and then I'm going to get you started and then uh, we're going to come back and then do the second part. So I always divide this into two. That's why I did it on the design worksheet. So depending if you're right or left handed, you're going to want to look for the knobby thing that's on the side. And you're going to use that as your counting points as you go around. So now sticking your slip knot over, I'm right handed. So I'm going to stick my uh, loop onto the left hand side of the actual knobs here. So if you're left handed, you might go in the opposite direction. So I'm going to stick my, my slip knot onto there and I'm going to pull it snug. I'm not going to reef on it, but I'm going to pull it snug. So now what we want to do is start the casting on process. So just using your styler pen or your fingers, if you want to do this, wrap it by hand. You just come onto the inside, up to the next one, coming out, and then wrapping in. And this is called e-wrapping because what you're doing essentially is making the string overlap each other on the interior, causing it to look like an e and we want to make sure that string's kind of halfway down. And uh, you can see how tight that I'm wrapping that. It's kind of loosey, but it's not, uh, it's not like really loose. Like it's not falling off kind of idea. So we just want to use the styler pen to really create the tension uh, that's consistent. Um, I find it's using a styler pen, your tension is a lot looser and actually makes your work look pretty good. So we're just going to wrap around once. Okay. And now the problem with this kind of uh, craft is that these uh, are like alligator teeth. They're really, uh, really thick and really uh, dense apart from each other. So one rotation is not enough. You're not going to create a nice dense look of any project if you don't wrap it twice. So for every one row that we do, we're going to wrap it twice. So let's re wrap again. So just continuing along, e-wrapping. This is called e-wrapping in the directions. And when I say we're going to e-wrap twice, so for every rotation, we're going to come around twice before we start the knitting process. So depending on you, you can really get into quite the, quite the speed with the, the Styler pen. The Styler pen will speed you up to a really nice thing. So after this, what we're going to just use, use your hand just to hold the string. And now I just kind of like hold it. And what we want to do now is start moving these down to the bottom. So what we're doing now is we're trying to create the two strings to act like they're one string. So the four ply Bernat yarn that we're using right now um, can actually turn into eight ply, which is what you need for a nice quality hat. So now that we push them all the way to the bottom again, we're now going to e-wrap again on sticking close to the top. So you don't want to have these strings kind of run into each other. So close to the top again, let's e-wrap again going all the way around. And this is all part of the casting on process. Okay, and now I always say let's go again because we're going to double it. So let's wrap around one more time. So on your sheet of paper you will have from 1 to 10 uh, listed and then 1 to 13. This is classified as number 1 that we're doing right now once we begin the knitting process. So now we come all the way around and so everyone now has two on there just like you see. You see how there's two rows? So now using this hand you're still holding it 
and now what we're going to do is start wrapping uh, start to actually do the knitting process so we've been wrapping toward the the right or sorry toward the left and now we want to knit in the opposite direction so this is where we come off so we just want to grab the bottom two sections that you see Hopefully you can see that and we want to just take it over now I like working with my loom upside down a lot of people like working with up and pushing up I think it's easier just to kind of put your needle in behind and pull out and down and then using the needle kind of pushing it back up if you can move those at the same time moving them about halfway back up you'd be laughing uh, it simplifies you it doesn't make you have to come back after each rotation and start pushing things down if you can get your finger and your your thumb coordination all within the same time uh, coordination so up and over using my thumb to kind of push under and pushing it back So this is going to count as row number one that we're going to go all the way around. Not sure my camera angle is any good today. I think I'm going to move it for the next part of this. So once you get into a rhythm, it's easier if this is on your lap than it is on a table like I'm showing you right now. And you know you're done as soon as you hit that knobby thing on the side. And now you're going to have a loose string. This is your starting string. You might as well pull it out and pull it toward the center. And, and now we've just rotated all the way around for just one. Okay, so now what we want to do is start row, so we're going to go on our sheet and check off number one, and now we're going to start row number two. So this is what, so this now, row number two to number nine will be the exact same thing as what I'm about to show you right now. So we're just going to continue to wrap. And of course we're going to wrap again, we're double wrapping everything. Now if you want to use two blue strings at one time, you're more than welcome to do that. It'll save yourself from double wrapping. So if you have two uh, string uh, yarn balls that you can use at the same time, just feed them both through your styler pen or through your hands and just wrap the loom once only. That'll actually save you half your time. So coming out, again using your hand to hold it. And what we want to do is start taking the over. So I'm working in the opposite direction to what I just wrapped it in. So we just so this will be row number two once we get done. So what I want you to do now is that you just need to go and do the exact same thing you just saw for row number three all the way to number nine. And then number nine is where we're going to start changing things up and start to create the brim. And uh, we're going to actually, um, sorry, number ten is when we're going to start creating the brim and uh, changing our colors in order to to match the Canadian, our American flag that we're working on. So I'll meet you back here. Just keep e-wrapping and I'll see you soon. You will notice that the loom has changed color and the reason why is that we did this American baby hat and the brim here is the same thing that we're doing on this American hat. So the brim, it's the same video. So I happen to use a different color uh, tutorial with that but then I got this already last night. So we're going to continue along and now we are done row number uh, 9 and so now we're going to do row number 10 together. So what we need to do is now cast off on the blue. So just about a hand width, I always do just right across the loom, just cut that string and we can move that out. And what I do is, do is I just tie a little knot around the string and then I put that knot over the very last peg that you have finished off with and then we're just going to leave that straggler there so the reason why we do that is so that the blues match so when we go to have a hat it'll look consistent all the way around so now what I would do is that we're going to be working on which tutorial are we working on today <laughs> we're working on this one uh, what I think is really brilliant and when the white 
offsets the blue. You can do it any other color, so you could do red if you wanted to instead, or you can just do a whole complete color uh, scheme. But I'm going to do this with the white because I think the white's more sexier looking. So let's uh, continue to do that. So what we're going to just do is I already have the styler pen already ready. I'm just going to make my slip knot, put that on, and we're just going to put that onto the beginning of the circle. So we cast it off on this one, so I'm continuing to work in this direction, so I'm just going to put my material. Now this row here you will not see on the outside, but you have to be very careful because I'm going to show you a little secret here. See how there's a little glitch here? There's actually a couple of them, and the reason for it is about what I'm about to show you. So what we need to do is that this row will never be seen as long as you do the next procedure right. So let's just wrap this once. So we're just, let's go around once. Again, these styler pens, it's just an emptied out uh, dollar store pen, work really in your favor for speeding you up. Now normally we would uh, double wrap this like I've already showed you, but because we are forming the brim, I only want you to go around once with the white. Basically we're introducing the white color on so when we go to actually get it ready, it looks like the, it's seamless even though I glitched up. So we're going to just do that, and now what we're going to do is just look, pull, let's unfold this, this will be like rolling up underneath, and what we want to do is we want to follow the knitting down in between all of it and find the bottom two strings. Now there will be two strings, so because you've double wrapped it twice, you will have two. So you just look at the bottom, and it actually is poking right out at you. It's the very two bottom on the edge. So you just want to follow it down, and there you go. So now what we want to do is take those two and put them onto the peg. Now what I've done in other tutorials where I've, I haven't told you to move these uh, white things down, let's move them all the way to the bottom. Because what's going to happen is it's going to change your order of, the, of your next procedure which kind of gets inconvenient and very long winded. So let's. Uh, move those down and get them out of your way right now. So now that you have folded up one, you're going to be able to see the rest of them. They're kind of like folded towards you. So just uh, grabbing them up. So there will always be two only. Only do two. It makes a difference if you grab one or two on the outside because this here is actually seen on the outside of your hat, this particular round. So, so the white's invisible because it's tucked in behind, but then this one here is visible. So let's just work our way around, just putting the strings on the thing. This is the third and while I'm while I'm finishing this, um, this is the third and final hat design of my three-part uh, collector series. Um, I kind of designed these all within a day, and uh, filming and everything like this for all three filming editing and marketing all on YouTube has taken me about 30 hours. So it's uh, been a long uh, process. People want stuff right away. And you know, the editing is what is the killer of anything. And I guess any good movie maker would know that as well. Really the actor's 30 seconds turns into hours of editing in the editing room. So we're just continuing to work around. I'm just kind of loosening that off. Now you notice I haven't really casted anything here in the white. It's just hanging out. And that's what we want. So let's just continue. This round is so important because you've got to make sure you get two. Now that you're getting close to the finishing off, you're going to have your straggler pieces and the stragglers from the very start of this project. And uh, then you have the stragglers from the white as well as the blue casting off. And what we want to do is tuck that into the brim before sealing the brim because on our the next time we go to knit, which will be in a few seconds, is that we are going to knit all of this into position and all of these stragglers will be permanently into your project. And if there's anything hanging out at the end, we can always fix that later. So there you go. So now everything is on. Now this is the most critical part. To avoid doing this mistake here where you have a glitch, what we need to do is follow a certain order. And you must do this. I'm sorry that I'm so rude about it, but you must do it. What we need to do is you got two sets of blue, you got a white, and then two sets of blue. So regardless of your colors, you'll have two, one, and two. In the very beginning, because we have cast it off and made that extra tie, you will have three on there. 
So here's what you do. You take the white, because that's the color that we are introducing into the hat. We're going to take that first, put it over. Then grab the bottom blue, and the bottom meaning by the, the bottom of the peg. And you'll find the, the first one's a little tough. Okay, so let's work our way around this. And again, it's the white, then blue. White. So what's happening is here is that we're introducing the white color, so it's ready to go on the next on the next round. But we don't want the white showing on the outside. So what's happening is that you're knitting the white into position, but then the secondary blue that's going over is hiding that stitch. So you will see a little bit of a bleed through of the white going through, but it's it's nothing in comparison to having a glitch happen. And that glitch happened because what I did is I grabbed all three at the same time, so I grabbed the two blue and the white at the same time, and I put it over at the same time, therefore changing the order in which it appeared. So it appeared that the white was the, the last over, causing that glitch. I really like, the brim parts for me are the most funnest part of loom, loom knitting. I think it's because in baby hats the loom uh, the brim forming is halfway through the project. So you know that you've done a really you're almost like halfway done. So I think that's kind of cool. Now the loom that I'm working on, I have two looms. Uh, you saw the first one in the first set of this video and this is the red one. This red one here was donated by a viewer of mine and uh, she thought I needed extra, so she gave this to me. Very well used um loom. Um I don't like one over the other, like a, they're both the same to me. However, this one here um, is well used, and meaning well used is that the pegs are tired, and meaning that um, they have been, like all the pressure of going over all the time has loosened off a few of them. So, like that one there just jumped, see? So what you want to make sure, as soon as you see that peg move, if you have a situation like that, either mark it with something, maybe a dab of duty on the top with the marker, and so that you come back and when you're done your project, you get your little uh, crazy glue gun and, and fix it. But as soon as that peg falls out, you're screwed. This is one of those projects that's not like crochet where you can undo something. So you got to make sure that you're paying attention to your craft. Okay, so in the next round when I'm coming around, the next uh, section of our tutorial, there will be 1 to 13 lines. This is the end of row number 10, which is our brim forming, and then what we start next is start number 1. So what we have is 13, so if we're going to be switching off red and white, we're going to have an extra color somewhere, and the extra color I always leave at the very top, so you're actually going to finish whatever color at the top there's going to be three lines and not two. And the reason why I leave it at the top is because it's bunching together at the top, you really can't tell that there's an extra round in there. So you'll be able to tell if you leave an extra round somewhere else in the hat, maybe even from the broom. Okay, and so we're coming to the conclusion of this round. This round takes a little bit longer because you're doing what you're doing, but it is the, the round that matters the most in my opinion. So the white. I have the straggler wanting to work with the white and I know I want that white to be clear than from anything, so I don't want that white to be uh, exposed like that. When there's not such a drastic color change, it's not really, it's a big deal, but it's not, it's not going to ruin your project. But with this, with white and blue, very much of a project record if it doesn't go in the right order. So we're now done that. Your brim uh, is now formed. And now what's, what we're going to do now is that we're going to divide the project. So we're going to do two white, two red, two white, two red, two white, two red. So you might want to write uh, one to 13 on your little list. 
that you had, uh, so 1 to 13, and then just put an R or red for white, or white, W for white, red for red, and then just check it off as you go. So what we're going to do is I'm going to do that first, and then I don't lose track, so I'll catch you back in a second. So we're going to start our white, and it's just like we did with the blue, is that we're going to double wrap, so we're going to go around our loom twice, and then pick the one over the top, just like regular knitting, so you know how to do that. Double wrapping means I'm going around twice. So you notice I haven't introduced the red yet. I'm not going to introduce the red until we get to the, I guess, line number three it would be. If this is one and two, will be white. And so then we'll introduce that color. A lot of people email me saying, how do you change colors? Well, that's what I'm about to show you after we get two rounds of this done is the easy way to do it. Okay, so we're just going to do what you did before and we're just going to take the bottom over the top. Okay, and now what we're just going to do is just cast all the way around. So I'll leave you that I'm going to fast forward the video to the next round which will be white and then we're going to cast over red and then we'll leave you to the final end of this project. Okay, so I just finished off a layer of white so let's do our second layer. Wrap that bad boy back up and we're we'll do it twice like we're doing with the entire thing. Now you could actually use double yarn at the same time. You could use two whites uh, going around to save you one extra rotation. It does matter though on the people talk to me and they say they have big holes in the in the in their uh, in where they're going around one revolution. And the reason for it is that your yarn relaxes. So by going around the second time with the same yarn, the second time you don't relax could be because you just continue to go as, as if you're going around twice, right? So it's a better situation and you will not get the holes if you don't use two yarn at one time, but you actually double wrap like what you're seeing. So again, the white is very, very simple. Just taking the bottom over the top again for this revolution. So just continue to go around there and the next one we're going to introduce our red on board. So we'll stay tuned. Okay, so right what back. we just did now, we just finished off the white and now just take your red and you'll probably have a styler pen for that one as well and if you don't, you can still wrap all this stuff by hand, it's not a big deal. Just faster with that. So where the, you've cat, you finished off with the white, okay, here. So what we want to do is we just want to make sure this falls out of the loom. You want to control where it falls out because if this is sitting over here, when you go to wrap it, you're going to trap it over here causing you to have problems. So it's easier to have it sitting out of the loom before you start. Now let's take your slip knot and we're going to put it into the very starting of the rotation. So we finished off with this one here, right? So we want to put it onto the next, leaving your straggler in position, just like so. And now we're going to wrap twice. So let's do that one here. So this is row number three if you're keeping any counts. These patterns are available on mikeysmail.com if you want to print them out and use them on your own time. Or take them with you or give them to a friend. We're going to wrap twice. So then, so what we're going to do now is we're just going to keep alternating. Every two lines we're just going to change the color back to red and white, back to red and white. And on this uh, particular pattern that I'm showing you right now, we're actually going to finish off with the red, so go there. So we're just going to knit as usual. So just take the white over the red. And just keep on going. So we'll do another layer of red and then we'll switch back to white and I'll show you how to do that. And then I'm going to let you go and you can finish off the rest of your project and we'll cast off together at the You'll end. You'll notice that once you start introducing the second color and you've left the white on that these strings will remain tangled. So what all you got to do, and it's just because we rotated it like so, so all you need to do is just rotate your loom instead of moving around your yarn and that will untangle right away for you. So now we've just finished off row number three and we're going to continue again one more rotation of the actual red and then we're going to cast back onto white and by casting on, I mean we're just going to introduce the white uh, back into the project, um, just like so. So it'll be very, very easy. Okay, so let's grab our red.
Okay, so the red is now wrapped, bottom over, and then what we're gonna do this will be the final of row number five, sorry, in row number four. And then what I want you to do is I want you to continue, we're gonna cast on white, so I'll show you how to do that next. And then I'm gonna let you go, but I want you to meet me back here uh, when we finish off row number 10. We are going to row 13, but after number 10, I need to show you something before you go any further past 10. So I'll meet you back here. Just finished second. off row number four. Make sure you check that off on your list. And now we're going to switch back to white. But again, you can see it tangled. So we're just going to untangle it again. Okay, so now we're going to use the white. And so all we're going to do now is just pull the slack on the white. So there's no slack. And now just start wrapping it as normal. And making sure that the red actually falls out of the loom. Okay, so out of the loom right where it's uh, finished off before. And we're just going to double wrap. So all I'm going to just do is just double wrap and then cast. And so I'm going to meet you back here after you complete row number 10. And that will be the final of the white. And what we need to do is cast off the white then and then continue with the last three uh, rotations with the red. So let's meet you back here at row number 10. So we're now finished row number 10. So what I'm going to do is just do our regular idea of casting off. So let's cut the string and we're just going to tie a little knot and put that knot over the last peg, just like so. And what we'll do is we'll just cut that maybe about an inch long. This is on the inside of the hat anyway, so nobody will see it. So there you go. And so all we have to do now from now, uh, 11, 12, and 13, we're just going to continue along with the red. And um, so basically I'll meet you back here in row number 13 where we'll start casting off. And uh, that's the really best part of the project because it means that you're done. And uh, I like pulling everything together and finalizing. So, And also, while you're just doing the last three runs, decide if you want to do one of these pom-poms that are on the top of this, like this other one. There's tutorials in uh, Mikey's Mail uh, in, the, in YouTube there if you want to find out um, how to make a pom-pom. And I think it's just a really cute touch. It really can make it from really super sweet to super cool. So uh, just continue along. So we're working on row number uh, 11. Uh, starting with the red again for the final three revolutions. So I'll see you back here in a second where we'll it cast off. It's now time to cast off and I've done row number 13. So what I do is about maybe two feet of string, just cut that just using your scissors and just slide off your styler. And your packages always come with these plastic needles and we're going to be using that to fasten off the top of our hat. So just feed your yarn in and make sure there's not too much slack. Just fold it in half so that the string is near to the bottom and we can keep moving that. So we've just cast it off in the last one here so we're going to start by start sorry we just finished off with the last one so we're now going to start casting off onto the needle starting on the very next one as if you were going to do another rotation. So what I need you to do is just stick your needle from the bottom of the peg going upward. It is important that you go in that direction because what happens is that it's like a clothesline. All of these pick up on the line and then you can seal it shut to cause this to happen. But if you go in the other direction, it causes it to turn backwards and then they all get tangled. So the best way to do this is just to turn your loom upside down like so, so that the extra material is hanging from the bottom. Because when if you turn it the other way, this material here catches into the pegs. So let's take your first one off. So the first one is always a little more difficult to get off than the rest. And you might want to use your hook to get that off. So just pull it off. There you go. And so now what we're going to just do is go from the bottom and what you can just do, I just grab it close to the thing. If I go over here, I'm going to cause this to really bend. So what I want to do is I want to stick my fingers close to it to pull it up and over and off and then pull the string through. So keep pulling that string through every time we go. So go then, grab close. This will save you bending that needle. You want to be very. Uh, you want to be careful with this as well. If you happen to pull it off, and then all of a sudden it comes off your darning needle, you are gonna. You might actually have a huge disaster on your hand where your work unravels. We have talked about this before. Is that loom knitting is not very friendly when it comes to making mistakes. It's a one-time opportunity. It's just like those knitting machines that you buy for your tabletops at home. You know they show on the shopping network. Everybody having a great time using those. But if they ever drop a stitch, and my mother had one, it always dropped a stitch. Therefore, this huge panel of, of like a whole shirt size would be a complete waste because it would drop one stitch somewhere. 
So this is kind of like this, but this is better controlled because you're doing it by hand, obviously. And you know, it looks more authentic too because you're doing it by hand. I've been tempted to buy one of those machines that uh, show loom knitting, but I've heard nothing but horror stories with people that do have them with dropping stitches. And uh, that little crank that's on the side of them apparently causes a lot of problems. So this is a really kind of quick process. As you know, once you get halfway through the loom there, you'll, you'll, you can start pulling this together tighter. But uh, I'm not going to do that uh, because I'm on camera with you and I want to show you how to put these together. So I'm just pulling that string through. So when we go to pull everything together in the top of the hat, it's going to form four sections. Sometimes it forms three, sometimes it forms five. It all depends how you pull it shut. So the way that I sew everything together is that it causes four to happen. So we're just going to continue along. So I got my last one here, so we're just going to pull that off, so the loom falls off, there you go. So now you got the top of your hat, kind of reminds me of Wonder Woman, so you have everything together. So now what we're just going to use, use your fingers and just kind of pinch, but not like pinch it to the point you can't move the material. And now just pull this string and everything comes together and it should form a section of four sections. We just want to do that again, so just continue to pull it tight. So there's your four sections. So now that I've got it tight there, I'm going to come on the opposite side, right near the top. Because you are working with red and the top area is red, you're not going to see where these stitches are going. So do that and just pull it through. And so that what we're doing is we're fastening the top of the hat. So let's pull it tighter. So let's go over the opposite side. So every time you want to sew this at the top, you just want to keep jumping over to the opposite sides just to kind of bring it together really good. And I go about four times jumping across and then I call it quits. And then I say, well, okay, it's now time to go into the interior of the hat. So I'm going to go one more time. And now what I'm going to do is, do is stick my needle straight down the middle and we're going to turn this inside out so you can see what the inside out looks like. You've been seeing that if you've been working on this project. Pull it all the way through and now it's time to just stick your needle under a few stitches, not to the point where it comes through to the other side of the material and we want to tie them into knots so just loop it around. So let's do that twice to cause the knot. There you go, you got your knot, you're going to cut it nice and short, and this one here is where it came off, so we're just going to pull that a little tighter, just going to trim it a little bit more, and then this is where we cast it on red, I'm just going to trim that a little bit more too. And voila, you now have an American style hat with the perfect brim, other than last time where we had that mistake. So make sure that if you're thinking about the accessorizing it, the pom-pom is kind of the way to go or you can do stars as well if you're interested in that kind of thing so all three of these patterns were are available on mikeysmail.com in the pattern section and there's tutorials for every one of them so thank you very much and we'll see you all later